right guys, this is question number one of four. So this question is testing your ability to recognize pre-diabetes as opposed to diabetes, which your professor may not have completely gone over, and we definitely didn't go over it in the pathophysiology portion. But I want you guys to get used to the fact that you're going to see test questions or exam questions or NCLEX style questions that are not directly related to anything that your professor or anything that the book went over. So we have to get used to that. So you really are forced to go to different resources. Thankfully, there's videos like these and other people out there that are getting the word out so that you guys are fully prepared. So without any further ado, let's get into question number one. A 20 year old client has been diagnosed with pre-diabetes. He asked the nurse how he could have been diagnosed with such a disease. The nurse explains which of the following findings associated with pre-diabetes. Select all that apply. A, a fasting glucose between 100 to 125. B, a hemoglobin A1Z result of four to 7%. C, a random blood sugar between 90 to 130. Or D, a two hour oral glucose test between 120 and 170. E, a two hour oral glucose test between 140 and 199. Or F, a hemoglobin A1C result between 5.7 and 6.4. What's so hard about NCLEX style questions is that when you study you can spend a lot of time on the signs and symptoms, laboratory values of the disease, and all kinds of other information related to the disease. Then you could get a question like that, which is asking for the early signs and symptoms of the disease. Possibly in your lecture though, and also in my content video, we did not go over the exact signs and symptoms for pre-diabetes. Remember though, nursing school cannot give you all the information you need to know. You must go to other resources like these videos because you really need to go above and beyond your classes. Consider yourselves warned. Also, also, this question is placed in the select all that apply style, which is super challenging, especially when you're running on low sleep, which nursing school induces. Let's look at the answer options though one by one. Option A, a fasting glucose level between 100 and 125. Well, it does not tell us how long the patient has been fasting for, but when they say fasting, this usually means either overnight or at least four to five hours. After this time, the blood sugar should be relatively low, between 70 and 110. So a fasting glucose of one 100 to 125 is a little elevated, making this answer option a sign of prediabetes. Option B, a hemoglobin A1C between four and seven. Well, a normal level range is between four and seven, depending on your facility. So this is pretty much a normal level. So this option would not be correct making this not a sign of prediabetes. Option C, a random blood sugar between 90 and 130. A random blood sugar means, just like how it sounds, means a blood sugar check without considering meals. So the patient could have just eaten a meal and after you eat, your blood sugar is normally slightly higher. But as you can see, the level of 130 isn't too high, making this a normal value and not the correct answer option. Option D, a two hour oral glucose test result between 120 and 170, remember, the oral glucose test is when the patient has ingested a solution that is very high in glucose. The patient's blood sugar, therefore, would normally be slightly high at first. And then when the pancreas got to work, it would bring it down. So the glucose level in this came down to about 120, making this not a correct answer option, as the blood sugar level of 120 in most facilities is still considered normal. Option E, a two hour oral glucose test between 140 and 199. So again, remember, with this type of test, they are checking the blood glucose several times after the ingestion of this solution. However, this time the lowest level was 140, which is slightly high, making this answer option correct and a sign of prediabetes. And finally, answer option F, a hemoglobin A1C result between 5.7 and 6.4. Well, since like we discussed before, a normal level is between four and seven, this would be the most next appropriate level up and therefore would make this a sign of prediabetes as well. Making the final correct answer option a, E, and F, because all of these are the diagnostic criteria for prediabetes. All right, guys, we really hope that you enjoyed that question. Like we mentioned before, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check back or even sign up for email updates so that you can know exactly when the next video is posted because we're gonna thoroughly go through and dissect another nursing exam test question or NCLEX question. So I will see you in the next video. Love you, bye.